we hit uh, another big beautiful zone of alteration uh mm. with very nice quartz veins and then sure enough uh the quartz veins had visible gold in them so we're awaiting assays on nine of the 21 holes we drilled at jupiter and uh the nine holes uh, cover really uh you know most of the most impressive stuff that we've seen so far so we're we're very excited these uh, assays back Hello to viewers tuning into Assay TV. In this session, we're catching up an update from Snowline Gold, uh, who are developing greenfield gold assets in the Yukon. And they've got some really interesting updates for us and new drill intersects that we're really keen to hear about. So I'm very pleased to be speaking again with Scott Bodal, CEO of Snowline Gold. Scott, hello, how are you? I'm great, Adam. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great. So um, last time, we spoke, um, you've been drilling the Jupiter project at Ineson, um, or we're just about to start in fact, and you've firstly had some great results and then had some significant intersects uh, more recently. Um, could you take us through an update of what the findings were? Yeah, so uh, I, I think we were around hole 18 uh, in our drilling last time uh, we chatted and we just gotten results back from hole six, which uh, had had seven meters of uh, about four grams per ton. And so, you know, we were excited to see that. It's not a headline number, but it's uh, for a brand new, never before, before drilled target, especially a blind target. Uh, it was uh, a good result to get. And so, uh, and at the same time, we had just gotten into some very visually interesting uh, stuff uh, over some pretty big intervals. And so I had talked about that a little bit and, uh, you know, we have finally started to get some of those holes back. Uh, not too long after we talked, uh, we, we got hole 11 back, which we had rushed, and that had uh, several very nice intervals. Um, we had uh, 13 grams over six and a half meters uh, farther down the hole, um, a, a nice broad kind of gram level uh, mid zone, and up towards the top of the hole around the 50 meter mark, we had about 10 and a half grams over five meters. So, um, so both of those uh, intervals were, were very nice to see, and also just the uh, the widths of the mineralization, as well as just hitting multiple mineralized structures within the same hole. Uh, and since then, we've gotten, uh, we've received more results from the lab. Uh, last week, we just had a press release out with uh, um, the surrounding holes from hole 11, holes 10, 12, and 13, which we drilled out in a fan going multiple directions. Mm -hmm. uh, even at one point, sort of turning the drill around for hole 13 and drilling what we thought was away from our target. Uh, and we hit uh, very nice zones of mineralization in all of those holes. Uh, hole 10 had uh, very comparable results to hole 11. Um, at, you know, uh, intervals like 10 grams over six meters. Uh, we had 13 meters of three, three and a half grams. Uh, we had uh, five grams over five meters at the top of the hole. Uh, hole 13, uh, which we, again, we drilled away was, had a 27 meter uh, zone of about uh, two and a half grams. And, uh, and 10 meters of four grams. And, uh, and I, I guess those numbers just start to kind of uh, fade in the background at, at some point. Uh, but uh, I encourage anyone to, uh, to go check out our press releases and, and check out our materials because uh, yeah, it, the way that the system is uh, holding together is really the big story there. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's one thing to hit a discovery hole. It's uh, something else altogether to, to have uh, multiple holes hit over a broad zone. Uh, and again, I, I, I just want to, uh, iterate that these are, this is a blind target. So, you know, we didn't really have a nice mineralized outcrop uh, with a high trench sample or something to step 10 meters back from and drill. Right. Uh, we're really just kind of getting into this system, hitting, you know, these are pretty random shots where we're making educated guesses. We have reasons to drill where we drill, but at the same time, it's a big anomaly. We're testing it pretty randomly and we're hitting very consistently. And so, yeah. When we spoke, you know, I, I was very excited about uh, what we were seeing in holes 10, 11, 12, and, and onwards up to hole 18. Um, and I'm still very excited about, you know, these holes uh, to come, holes 15, 16, and so on, are, are looking really intriguing, uh, including, um, we, you know, we, we've stepped out uh, fairly, uh, in fairly large step outs to holes 15, holes 16 through 18. And then we took a, a very large step to the north, uh, about 1.1 kilometers, knowing you know, we didn't know the assay results, but uh, we knew that we were into good stuff with what we were seeing or we were confident. And it's very nice to have that validated now with these spectacular assays. Um, but we, with that bird in hand, we jumped up way to the north and, uh, and drilled a few holes on a, on a target that we otherwise didn't really know how to drill, except for, you know, let's just, let's just try it. And, uh, and so we did, and we hit uh, another big, beautiful zone of alteration. Uh, mm -hmm. 
some very nice quartz veins. And then sure enough, uh, the quartz veins had visible gold in them. So we're awaiting assays on nine of the 21 holes we've drilled at Jupiter and uh, those nine holes uh, cover really, uh, you know, most of the most impressive stuff that we've seen so far. So we're, we're very excited to get these uh, assays back. Fantastic. Yeah, Lo loads going on with Jupiter. Really good. You know, you put the drill in and, you, and you, you're getting great results wherever you go. But like, does, does that change the strategy then? Is it a case that you're going to continue going wider um, based on the good results that you've had? Or are you going to hone in and really, really focus the drill bit to sort of define um, what you've already found? That's a good question, because uh, both those approaches, I think, are justified. Um, you know, we, we do need to hone in to, to start building a resource. Yeah. At the same time, especially with this step out to the north, and, and we've drilled, so we've drilled about 1.1 kilometers of a three kilometer soil anomaly uh, and float train. And so, uh, you know, this uh, has has the smoke there to be a very big system. And from what we've drilled so far, it does look to be a very big system. So, uh, you know, we might... Uh, we might add value by uh, doubling down in one area and building a resource, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're just uh, getting oriented in the system and figuring out how big it is. So ideally we'd like to have two drills there going and, uh, and basically pursuing both of those uh, approaches simultaneously. One drill that gets back into the meat of, uh, you know, where we're finding uh, these, uh, these nice intervals and mm. stepping out, you know, so far we've uh, in, in these 150 meter, 200 meter step outs, we're still hitting stuff in these fairly blind shots. So, uh, getting a better idea of the continuity um, and the better idea of the orientations and and so on as we build towards a resource would be uh, very important and and a second drill could uh, continue to jump around and continue to just really probe the limits of uh, the gold mineralizing system at Jupiter which you know at this point is still open in all directions. Yeah, um, you mentioned this sort of uh, num number of results you're waiting from back from the lags and there was a backlog earlier this year for a lot of. Um, miners, particularly in the Yukon as well. Uh, is that still a challenge at the moment, uh, waiting on uh, assays and delaying, delaying results because they've just got so much uh, to get through? Uh, it is, yeah. I mean, it would be nice to have uh, all the all the results back at once, but uh, I guess for, um, you know, I, I, I like to think that our, our investors get the story and where we are and what we're doing, but for the impatient investor anyway, it does provide, uh, you know, a continuous news flow through the winter season in the Yukon. So. Yeah, uh, there's that silver lining, but no, it, it would be nice to uh, to get it all back at once. But right now, it's based on the backlogs. I mean, I I, I don't know what the uh, how it'll come out, but it does look like you know it'll be anywhere from months to well more months. Whether you know that extends into the new year or not, we will see. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, focusing on what you do know, the the grade is pretty pretty good, and you know, you've written in your literature recently that you observe. Uh, various forms of uh, gold, including native gold. And just, just for our viewers, could you go into a bit of depth about that and sort of um, the different forms of gold that you've, that you've discovered? Yeah. Um, so we've, uh, we've initially at, uh, at Jupiter, you know, before getting our first assays back, uh, we really didn't have much to go on in terms of, you know, you hit a quartz vein and it does it hold gold or not. And uh, most quartz veins, of course, even very high uh, grade quartz veins won't have visible gold in them. So uh, that's that's a bit of a rarity to see. And so, uh, and you know, we didn't even know that there was visible gold in the system when we started out. Uh, and so uh, in getting those quartz veins back, we were really using a, a sulfide mineral as a, a pathfinder for the gold and, and relying on that uh, pretty heavily. And, uh, and so what we've seen now in these latest holes is that, uh, you know, First of all, there's there's gold in uh, in big halos around the quartz veins and in what look like very boring mudstones, uh, and yet you know we're we're getting some pretty high grades. Uh, and actually, if you if you look at our latest release, when you see a 1.5 meter interval with like you know a 45 grams per ton or a 31 grams per ton, uh, what that means is that you know it's kind of uh, a little bit of egg on our face that uh, these rocks looked so uh, uninteresting to us that 1.5 meters is sort of our default spacing that we go down the hole and sample. Uh, and uh, if we see something interesting, we of course try to break it out so that high grade zones don't get smeared and, uh, and that sort of a thing. Uh, and so that we can really understand where the grades are coming from within that interval. But a 1.5 meter interval with that high of a grade uh, means that, you know, we didn't quite pick up on the fact that that was going to be significant. So, so that's pretty good to see, you know, we do have uh, some high grade zones that we, we split out very nicely and, uh, and we are getting a better understanding of where the gold is coming into the system from that. But, but then these other zones are just, uh, you know, that's, that's news to us and, and very good news to us. 
So we're seeing mineralization in uh, in the siltstones. We're seeing it in quartz, and not just quartz with sulfide, but uh, but what we thought were you know barren quartz veins. So uh, that's uh, that's very good to see, and it also has uh, important implications for uh, the metallurgy of the of the deposit. We haven't done any studies in that vein yet. It's pretty early stage, but uh, seeing gold, seeing native gold, seeing gold uh, without sulfides and other things like that uh, do make it uh, do suggest that it'll be easier uh, to, to process this kind of deposit from a metallurgical standpoint. Mm. Excellent. Um, okay, so let's turn to your uh, other deposit at Rogue. Um, what are the updates there? And um, uh, are you continuing to hit gold? I, we are, just to, just to clarify, uh, both of these are, are of course uh, new, uh, new discoveries, uh, previously undrilled targets. Uh, we certainly hope we're into some big deposits, but uh, but we won't know that for sure uh, for some time. Uh, we won't know kind of uh, you know what uh, what the scale of the deposits are. But um, yeah, down at Rogue, uh, it, it's a different style of system. So uh, I, I guess I got ahead of myself at Jupiter and and didn't really mention you know that the gold that we're getting into there is uh, is epizonal orogenic. So it's uh, mm -hmm. these big beautiful quartz veins. Uh, it you know it's. We didn't mean to, to go out and try to find the flavor of the month, but of course, uh, episode of Orogenic Gold is uh, is what's driving the rush in Newfoundland right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you see some great results coming out of there, and uh, and you know we're we're very happy to have it on our on our claims here. Um, down at Rogue, we're we're targeting something entirely different, and it's still gold, of course, uh, but it is a, a much different or a very different style of uh, of gold system. So it's called a reduced intrusion related gold system, and. Mm -hmm. It is what you see at uh, at mines like uh, like Eagle here in the Yukon. Uh, we're actually you know in in similar rocks on the same intrusive belt, uh, and uh, and farther to the west along that belt in Alaska, you have some really world class deposits like uh, Fort Knox um, and even you know potentially Pogo, uh, and so those are those are ten million ounce give or take deposits. Uh, with, uh, that have proven spectacularly successful over the years. And so, uh, but the difference is that we're targeting a big bulk tonnage system here, as opposed to high grade veins, uh, like you see at uh, Jupiter. Um, and so we're really looking for something large and uh, the grades don't necessarily have to be too high, but uh, obviously higher grade is better. And, um, and fortunately, you know, uh, again, uh, like Jupiter, this was a, a newly identified target, uh, previously untested, uh, very little prospecting. Uh, at all prior to this season. And uh, we took the time that we were working at Jupiter to really uh, home in on this target. Uh, we found a, a large system of sheeted quartz veins and, and that's what carries the grade in these systems. You have these little veins that are like anywhere from a half centimeter to a couple centimeters wide and you just get several of them per meter uh, over a big area. And, uh, and it's those veins that carry the gold grade uh, across sort of barren uh, rock in between the veins. Um, and what we got into, basically we drilled four holes all four holes, uh, we had visible gold in them. So that was very encouraging. Um, you know, we weren't expecting to see visible gold at all in the system. And so to see that is, is pretty important. And, um, and at the same time, the distribution of the visible gold is really exciting. Our first hole, V21001 uh, at the Valley Target at Rogue, um, it, uh, it was 161 meters in length. And the first instance of visible gold was uh, at seven meters down the hole. And the last instance was actually in the uh, in the core barrel when we pulled it out. So, um, you know, that was uh, probably 159 meters, give or take. And so uh, we had 31 instances of visible gold throughout the length of that hole, fairly evenly distributed across 161 meters. So that to us is, uh, you know, without getting the assays back, uh, it, it's a bit of a home run. Um, we'll, we'll wait to see, you know, how good or uh, or not it is, but uh, but certainly it's, it's very encouraging to see that sheeted veining across the entire length of the hole to see uh, visible trace amounts of visible gold throughout uh, carry throughout the entire length of the hole, and uh, and then to see a visible gold in the other holes as well, it certainly suggests that we're into a big system. And and the surface uh, surface work we did uh, suggests the same. You know, there's a 900 meter uh, golden soil anomaly by several hundred meters wide, and even the intrusion that we're drilling into there is uh, is not recognized on any previous geological map. So uh, I, this is you know super greenfields country, very little work done. Uh, and, and really that's maybe the biggest takeaway, uh, from our work this season is that, you know, at the start of the season, we set out to, uh, explore what we thought was a new gold district. That was really Snowline's flagship focus. And, uh, I don't think we could have proven that thesis any more spectacularly than we, we were lucky enough to this season with, uh, with two 
brand new targets, both carrying visible gold, uh, some really uh, spectacular grades in our first uh, set of discovery holes at, uh, at Jupiter and uh, many more assays to come. But, but basically, you know, we, we set up saying, look, here's a new district. This hasn't been explored or recognized before. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we have drilled two things on it. And, you know, that, that really seems to hold water. So that's, uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting for us. Yeah, absolutely. The success rate of um, with the targets is speaks for itself and um, really promising for the district. Um, so you also have other uh, assets um, in the um, other targets. Sorry, in the um, portfolio that you're that you're looking at. Um, also providing some optionality towards base metals. Um, could you give us an update on what's going on there? Sure. Uh, so well, on our URSA project, uh, which is. Uh, a large base metal project. Uh, we we just finished a um, a VTEM survey, and uh, you know, without looking too uh, scattered in terms of our focus up there, we are pretty well focused on this uh, this district. Um, and and Ursa is uh, just a stone's throw if you have a very good arm, I suppose, uh, from uh, Ironson and uh, Rogue. And so you know, it's right in that neck of the woods. Uh, we lumped it in because it does have gold potential. But uh, there was a pretty interesting base metal story there as well, where you have, uh, I think we talked about it a bit last time, but uh, you have, uh, you know, tens of kilometers of very anomalous uh, base metal mineralization, particularly zinc, uh, copper, molybdenum, uh, and uh, there's a little bit of silver kicking around in there, vanadium, a few other elements, and nickel uh, is worth noting. And, um, and yeah, the zinc values, for instance, in stream sediment samples are exceed a percent over the order of kilometers or 10 kilometers or more uh, up to three percent zinc in silts so uh, just wild numbers coming out of there and uh and definitely worth a follow-up the only similar geochemical signature on the territorial scale in the yukon uh in the selwyn basin which has some world-class uh, uh zinc resources is uh, howard's pass and those are similar aged rocks uh, it's a you know that's one of the largest undeveloped zinc resources in the world um so you know with this in our portfolio uh, not to have a peek at it would be uh, would be kind of silly. So, you know, uh, our focus is definitely on Einerson and Rogue and on gold, uh, but we have, uh, you know, we, we are looking at this and we do have some uh, funds earmarked for that. Uh, and so we, we completed a, a 400 kilometer uh, VTEM survey. Uh, it gives very extensive coverage of that block. Uh, we're still, uh, you know, looking at that analytically and, uh, and figuring out that data as it comes in. So, um, we're, we're excited to see if that uh, you know brings about new targets and if that uh, if that's a avenue that we want to keep pursuing and uh, and then it does provide some optionality you know it's a big enough uh, big enough system and a big enough package that that could be something that if it is successful we can spin out or look at uh, ways to joint venture while we focus on our core brand certainly okay um, and how the financials you know last time we spoke you're obviously in a healthy position and you funded your exploration but you're doing a lot of work a lot of drilling now um are you going to be looking to raise uh, in the new year if the new year campaign is looking to be uh, equally as aggressive um yeah uh, we we are in a healthy position financially um we have uh, you know that some of the dust is still settling on a season but we're having the order of 2.7 million uh in the treasury at the moment and um as uh, yeah, as we go forward, uh, you know, it's enough that we could uh, we could do another uh, nice season out there, and especially with knowing what we know now, you know, uh, build on these resources in a very nice way. But uh, I think that what we have out there really merits a, a much more aggressive approach. Now that we really know what we're into, uh, we'd really like to uh, pursue that aggressively. And so uh, we will likely be back uh, to raise. I, I think the amount of that raise depends on uh, the enthusiasm of the markets at the time. Um, we also don't want to blow ourselves out, but uh, but I think the, um, yeah, the, the justification is there to, to go much, much bigger next season. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and I think the appetite is, is building uh, as the markets sort of realize what we're into out here and the snow line story becomes more familiar to more and more people. Okay. And I also saw that in a news release that you've uh, got some options on a property. Um, yeah, how does that play into uh, the overall land package? That's right. I mean, well, having the uh, validation that we've had of this district scale thesis, it makes sense to try to consolidate the district. Uh, and there really isn't a lot of competition, uh, but one uh, other major landholder from the, the past cold rush uh, did find some pretty interesting results on, on their land too. And so we were able to uh, come to an option agreement with them that uh, works out very well for us. Uh, 
you know, comparable to the price of staking. And yet we get a data set with some uh, really spectacular targets or existing projects. So uh, each, each block that we picked up complements uh, one of our existing uh, blocks, uh, the Ursa project, it basically we tripled its length along this uh, same zone of uh, prospective rocks, covering about 30 kilometers of this trend. And uh, on our Cynthia project down south of Einerson and Rogue, but in the same uh, overall geological district, uh, we picked up uh, a target that is extremely interesting. Uh, there's about a you know, 350 meter area with, uh, I think it's eight soil samples that uh, run more than a gram per ton, up to six grams per ton in soils that just really hasn't seen much in terms of follow-up at all. So just uh, another very low hanging fruit in terms of, uh, in terms of targets for us to, uh, to drill test. And uh, it really fits in with our strategy of, of you know, taking on targets, taking on data, uh, building this region, cementing our cornerstone position in this region, and, uh, and bringing targets into Snowline that are pretty much at the drill discovery stage. It, you know, it saves us years of, of high-risk capital if we can just bring in drill-ready targets in an area that we are more and more seeing has that geological potential. Yeah, certainly. It's certainly gathering pace um, with the excellent results that you've had so far. So, Scott, thanks very much for providing an update on the new holes or hitting gold. Uh, we look forward to catching up later in the calendar as to how those progress um, and how the assay lab results come back. So thanks for talking with assay TV. Perfect. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I look forward to chatting again. Yep. Cheers.